What's going on everybody? So today is a pretty exciting day. I ended up getting all the wiring harness that I needed for Clyde. I ended up going in and getting it from psiconversions.com. They went ahead and sent me everything that I need. It worked out really well. Uh, they just started making the Gen 5 harnesses. So I know that I've heard of them doing real good stuff at the LS. So I decided to hit them up and see what they could do for the LT. Uh, and this is what they sent me. So I ended up getting 202 sensors, the mass airflow cartridge, the Cadillac pedal, the E92 ECU, and even as far as going with getting the buns for the exhaust when I need to weld those in for the O2 sensors. And then here's the harness. Ended up getting it all from them. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get it unpackaged, laid out on the car here, using it as a table. So I can kind of see where exactly it's gonna lay out on the Mazda, uh, kind of see where the computer's supposed to sit and everything, so I know kind of where I need to put everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it unpackaged and take a look at it. All right, so I got it all laid out. Looks like you can move this grommet around, so then you can put more in the car or less, but it'll for sure be plenty of uh, wire. So that'll be all engine bay, and then I can bring this in and set the computer um, into the engine bay. So all these will plug into there. This is your electronic pedal. Uh, this is one thing that's real nice about getting an aftermarket standalone harness is that you don't get that huge block that uh, you would get like when you do a pullout of a junkyard vehicle. So it's kind of nice, smaller harness, uh, smaller fuse block and everything. So these are all plug in here. And then here's your, here's your five wire hookup. That's pretty much all you need to do right here. So it's going to be like ignition, ground, key, um, all that stuff. So that's where I have the instructions here they all come from psi and they walk you through everything that you need to do uh sensors check mark uh just kind of as you go through it tells you what all the plugs go to you guys can see pretty sweet deal uh makes it real nice and easy gives you all your steps that you need to do and all of that so i'm going to go ahead and go through this read about it and then i'll know what to do when i go to install it but, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, nothing real crazy. I'll go ahead and pull up uh, what I need, what those five wires are for real quick. All right, so here's all the loose wire hookups right here. So you have yellow, which is brake signal, um, brown, white, which is the, uh, I believe that's like the check engine light, MIL lamp ground. Brown is speedometer optional, white is tack optional. Uh, blue purple is a fused to 12 volt switched so and then red ignition feed and then you also have your main uh, feeds over here which is your like power looks like there's power there and a solid ground there and another ground here uh, and just looking at it real quick that's what I see here's the transmission plug since this wiring harness is set up for the 6L80E that needs to be on there um, if you got a harness without one that was just going to like a power glide or a turbo 400 or whatever it would not have this and this would be all deleted so it's kind of a quick look at everything so i'm just trying to get an idea it looks like this will definitely probably be over underneath like the, hopefully around the passenger side maybe i try to set it up underneath the dash on the driver um electronic pedal that's gotta go there's plenty of extra here so that's got to go over to the driver's side no matter what and then your loose wires that those will get wired to whatever I need to do. Uh, and then in here, it even goes through and tells you kind of what wires hook up to like the right fuse to run like a fan and everything off of it. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how I plan on doing uh, like a dash in the car. I've looked up quite a few different OBD2 dashes. Um, like AEM has one that I saw, PRI and some stuff like that. They're kind of expensive. They're really nice. So I'm gonna see um, to get going, not a big deal because with HP tuners, I can just pull up the scanner tool and it gives you everything right there. So not a big deal on that part. So just trying to get an idea. Uh, and then I know kind of where I need to go through because the firewall will need a hole that size to get the harness through. So I got to start planning kind of to get that in there. So uh, otherwise everything looks good. Shouldn't be too bad. I mean, it makes everything real easy to install when you're talking like electronic pedal, other than mounting the thing, which it comes with a little mount, you just plug it in and go, uh, real simple. I'll have to hook up like a battery to the stock harness and try to figure out 
what's the uh, key 12 volt from the factory on the Mazda so I can run it off the factory key, which I'd really like to do. So, little look at the harness. Going to be doing a lot more whenever I get this in the car, hooking up those five wires and then hopefully getting this thing running. Right. So I'm starting to get the 6L80 controller installed in the transmission. I ended up just buying a whole new uh, valve body. So I only need to switch over the TCU to match up with the E92 for the LT swap. But I ended up finding a better deal on the whole valve body. So this one is a 2012 and up, so it will communicate with the uh, computer correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out all of the fluid out of the transmission. So that's what I'm working on now, getting all that drained out. Uh, it was a pull-out transmission, it was supposed to have all the fluids out of it, went to start taking the pan off, and it ended up leaking everywhere. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and do that, and then get that installed. Hopefully I can do it all in the car without it being too big of an issue. Uh, since I don't want to pull the whole transmission out because that thing is heavy. So I'm going to try to do that and then see what happens. Hopefully uh, it'll all work. I won't know until everything is plugged in and ready to go. Uh, but I guess it's a pretty simple deal. Like six bolts, uh, undo it all, a couple connectors, and put the new one in and reconnect. So here is the 6L80E uh, valve body that I ended up getting. Got it off eBay for like 300 bucks, and then it was able to be written where the other one can't, and if you buy a whole brand new one, you gotta match the VIN number to it, and then that's a whole not that's like another hundred dollars. So it's like six hundred for it new, and then a hundred dollars for it to get the VIN matched. So just went ahead and did this, and I think this is the best way to go. It took me a couple weeks to wait for it to pop up on eBay, but it ended up working out, I think. Alright, so there's the new TCM. There's the old TCM, and then there's a look inside a 6L80. So Actually pretty simple, kind of cool. You can see all the drums and everything, all the uh, clutches up in there, all that. So I'm going to just clean up this a little bit and then go ahead and install this other one. So it should go right in there. I was just looking at this. I'll probably go ahead and set this up in there first and then uh, go ahead and install the rest of the valve body. Went ahead and got the Corvette balancer installed. As you guys can see, it makes up quite a bit of a difference. It'd be about right there. So about an inch worth of uh, gain as far as clearance from the balancer to the radiator so I can get some fans in the car. So definitely seems to help out quite a bit. All right, so after about three or four hours of messing with it, I finally am gonna be able to get, I think the, the engine and transmission made it up. Uh, what was fighting me is the converter just didn't go quite far enough in. It sat all the way in, I thought, and it just needs to go just a little bit more, about another inch, so I'll show you guys the on like a 6L80, and most transmissions, the converter needs to sit back past the housing just a little bit, and then once it gets made it up, then you can set it into the back of the engine there on the flywheel. So I was battling that for a little bit, but all right, gonna move forward now. All right, so the engine's back in. I mocked up the little exhaust uh, from previous videos if you guys didn't see it yet. So I cut the stock flanges off. These are like a just a shorty header for a truck. So gonna take these as you can see it's gonna be real tight right there so hopefully I can turn it and sneak it down through the near the K member there so what I did to do that is uh, I got this donut so the donut comes it's actually a top half and a bottom half if you haven't seen one so I'm gonna make a tack in here a few spots so it doesn't try to spring apart when I cut it and then I'm gonna cut like a quarter a quarter out of it and see if I can stick it in there and get it to wrap around. So gonna try that and see how it works out. All right, so after looking at the exhaust, I'd end up having to cut a big chunk out of the frame here. And I really don't wanna start notching the frame and then it kinda gets tight down through here. So what I'm thinking is just in case I ever wanna put a turbo on the car, I'm gonna actually bring the headers up and forward. So this one will come up, come through here, probably sneak down uh, back behind the suspension here and then come out right over here. And then the same thing over here. So this header is gonna end up going in here. Uh, it can't quite rotate, but to give you guys an idea, it'll be right there. So it'll come like up and over, come through here, and again, kind of sneak down through the suspension and kick out right over here's the plan. So with me doing that, uh, coming up and forward, LT headers do not have a, um, like you can't flip them from this side to that side. You can only go either 
back and down or flip them and come forward and down. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to go ahead and cut the flange off and flip the flanges and put this flange on this header, that flange on this header, and then I can come up and forward. Uh, I got to get them cut and then I'm actually going to shorten this one up just a hair so then it can come in here and rotate down and then I'm hoping that it turns because the alternator will sit like right here. So hopefully I can clear it just enough. And then if I ever want to put like a turbo or whatever, I could always just come back in here and, and like cut and add on like a turbo flange right here, uh, down, however, put it in here and mount it and put a little turbo kit, maybe a twin kit on it at some point, which would be pretty crazy. So then I don't have to completely redo the headers at that point. So just a simple way of doing it. Just going to go ahead and cut it and switch the flanges around and try to use them that way. A little sneak peek at the wheels that I got for the car. They're the uh, Jigs SSR spikes. I think they look pretty good on here. Not too bad, just getting an idea, kind of. I want the thinnest wheel I could, which is a seven inch wide rim. Uh, it's the only one that they offer, and, but I think it's gonna be really close with the tire and everything on it. I think that's gonna be just about right. It's kind of funny that the skinny up front almost looks like a, like a full width rim, but it's gonna work out pretty good, I think. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right, everyone, so that's it for this video. I hope you're enjoying this build, and I cannot wait to bring you a lot more of Clyde in the future. So if you would, please hit that like, subscribe, and share button, and we'll see you guys next time.